Thank you, Chris. Good morning, Park Place. How's everyone today? That was an amazing good morning, I tell you. It is good to, to be in the house of the Lord again. It's good to be amongst people that are happy and energetic and glad to be here to, um, to meet again and to uh, hear the word and to fellowship. Amen? Amen? Will you turn in your Bibles today to 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 12? 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 12. And it says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man? which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Dear Father, thank you. Thank you for the word today. We thank you, Father God, that you are here, that you are present, Lord, with us to help us to know and to understand what you're saying to us today. Now, Lord, I pray that your blessings, that your understanding be upon every heart and mind. I pray, Father God, that revelation comes so that every person that hears the word, both here and those that are listening online, will hear what you are saying to them, the revelation that you are given to them about yourself, about the things that you have for us, the things that you have stored up for us. And it's just a matter of us ending time with you to get the revelation. Father, I pray and I ask that I decrease and that you by your spirit increase within me. Help me to preach it. Help me to teach it as you have given it to me. And I thank you for it in Jesus name. And God's people said, amen. I'd like to teach and preach today from the topic from conversation to revelation. From conversation to revelation. When we look at this passage of scripture, what we are seeing is that Paul is quoting Isaiah 64 and 4. If we were to read in Isaiah 64 and 4, it says, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, which he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. So what Isaiah was originally saying is that from the beginning of the world, from the first Adam, the first man that was created, that I have not seen, ear hadn't heard the true revelation that God wants for his people, except through his spirit. So it means that God, because he is so vast, because he is so great, and also because he's merciful, he has given us a revelation of himself. We, through what we see, we can see the goodness of the Lord. We can see it in nature. We can see it in our family. We can see it in our own bodies. We see the wonder of God. We hear and we hear of testimonies and also we hear of the goodness of the Lord and we learn also about him, his character, what he does, what he doesn't like, what he does expect from us, what he doesn't expect from us. But according to scripture, there is another level that God wants us to go to, that God wants us to push in in, in our relationship with him. And it's that level of revelation it's that level of revelation. Again, it's saying, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. 
So what God is saying in that scripture is there are some things that I have for you that you haven't even imagined. With everything that I've revealed in nature, with everything that I have revealed in my word, there are some things that you cannot imagine until my spirit who dwells in you gives you that revelation. So then now, what does that do for us as Christians? What it does for us is it says, oh my, there is another level of a relationship that I can have with God that he can actually explain not only his word and not only scripture, but he can give me an, an insight into the dialogue and the conversation of the Trinity. The scripture says that no man knows himself except by his spirit, his own spirit. And we know that there's father, son and Holy Spirit, three parts. We saw the revelation of God through creation and the fact that he is omniscient and he is omnipowerful and that he is able to do anything and everything that his will desires. We saw a revelation of the son in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, not just in sacrificing what he left in heaven, but in what he went through on the earth for us. And now we see this last manifestation, which is his Holy Spirit sent by the son. Remember, Christ Jesus said, I go to the father and I do not leave you comfortless. I will send my spirit to comfort you. And we saw this happen in the book of Acts. So now we have a comforter. We have the manifestation of the spirit of God in us. When we are saved, when we confess Jesus as Lord, when we say, come in, I need you in my life. I need you controlling my life. I need you directing me. What we have done is we have said, God, I want the revelation. I want this revelation that my eyes haven't seen and my ears haven't heard, that my heart has not even imagined. I want this revelation. And so the question is, what can we do to make sure that we are ready for the revelation? What are the steps that must be taken to make sure that our lives are lining up in a way and our walk is lining up in a way so that the Holy Spirit can really reveal to us what God has for us? It says that it is the deep things of God that are revealed to us, the deep things of God. I know that we have all heard of the expression, I'm in deep thought. And anytime you hear someone say, I'm in deep thought, it means that I'm thinking in a way different than I normally think. It may be that you might just be sitting and you might be thinking or you may be uh, uh, considering things for quite some time to the point that it gets someone's attention. And the attention that it gets is, You've been sitting there for a long time thinking about whatever you're thinking about. And your response is, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just in deep thought. I'm thinking about some things. This is what the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to us. And you know that when we have a revelation of the deep things of God, what it does for us is that it creates for us a baseline for truth. We suddenly realize I know what is real and what is not real, what is true and what is a lie, what I can stand on and what I can confess and what I need to leave to the side because it is not God. The word says, try the spirits by the spirit to see whether they be of God. You'll never be able to do that unless you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit so that he can take you through that process of seeing whether or not that person is operating in the spirit of Christ Jesus, in the will of God, with the with the the authority and with the assignment of God in their actions. Try the spirit by the spirit to see whether they be of God. And so when we look at verse 
Number 11, it says, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of that man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. So it kind of reminds us of that scripture where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life, meaning for you to get to God, you have to come to me. He it's a cut and dry thing with with the Trinity as to how you're able to come to the father. You must go through the son. There are other religions. There are other teachings. There are other doctrines. There are other beliefs. But according to what Jesus Christ, the one that came, that died and that rose from the dead, making himself singular to being the son of God, he said, I am the way. So as Christians, when we hear other doctrines, when we hear other other teachings, when we hear other beliefs, we have got to stand firmly on the word of God. Jesus is the only way to come to the father. That's the revelation that we have by the spirit of God that lives on the inside of us. That's the blessed assurance that has to be unshakable in us as we proclaim and as we confess him as Lord and as we reveal him to the world and we show through our lives and show through our testimony according to scripture that we have gotten a revelation from him about his father, about him and about who we are in him. Amen. It says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. And so now what we are understanding is we're understanding this Greek word apocalypsis, apocalypsis, meaning revelation. It's the revelation, it's the unveiling, it's the uncovering our relationship with Jesus Christ and the, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit within us means that we live a life of constant uncovering, constant uncovering as we are communing with God, as we are walking with him, he constantly uncovers. It is like two people walking on a journey and as you walk, the person that you're walking with, you want to learn from them. So there has to come a time where you stop talking and you start listening. If there has to come a time where you go from conversation, meaning I have something to say, to revelation, meaning I want to hear what you have to say. That's where Jesus wants us to get to. He wants to, us to get to the place where we're not depending on the things that we see and the things that we hear, which are going on around us. But instead, we get to the place where we're listening to the Holy Spirit. And as we listen, we're going from conversation, meaning every time we get with the Lord and every time we spend time with him, instead of us talking and having so much to say, we literally sit down as students of the Holy Ghost and say, what do you want to teach me today? When was the last time that we as Christians really stopped our flow, our norm, and just say, God, what do you want to tell me? What do you want to tell me? Any of us that have children will know our children always have something to say. <laughs> it is their nature. They have something to say about what's going on with them, what's going on with you, what's going on with their friends, what they want, what they don't want. And, and, and the scripture says we are to be like children. We're to be like children. What is something else that children do that is so unique to them? Why? Why? And as a parent, you get to the place where you got to accept why. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. It really is. But they ask why. That's what God wants from us. He wants to hear us settle down and be quiet and ask him why. 
Lord, why am I going through this today? Why is this person so ugly to me today? Why, is, why are these people working against me? Why did you say what you said to me about me being here or doing this? Why did you say that? That's what he's listening for. That's when conversation goes from conversation with God to a listening for the revelation. Because the Bible says, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what he has for us. So we all got to get to the why of the conversation. We got to get to the place where we start asking God to reveal to us those things that we can't imagine. Every one of us in our lives right now, if we walk in this Isaiah 64 and 4, every one of us, there is something about us that is waiting on the why. It's waiting on us to say that simple phrase, Lord, why do you want me to do this? Lord, why did you say this about me? I dare you. I challenge you. The next time that you go into prayer, remember, recall those things that God has said he was going to do for you, whether it was to get your degree, whether it was to have a child, whether it was to to start a business, whether it was to write a book. Ask him, why did you tell me that? Why? And then wait for the revelation. When we look at the, the times that that we hear this word revelation, we suddenly realize that it is akin to the word behold. Because when God says behold, there's always a phrase or the sentence after it that reveals a revelation. We look in scripture and it says oh, almost uh, uh, 1527 times the word behold appears in the Bible. And so we look and we say, what does behold mean to us? Behold means to consider, not only to consider it, but to meditate on it, to not just think about it, but to meditate on it. Genesis 1 and 31 says, and God saw that everything that he had made and behold, it was good. Behold. So God sat for a moment and he meditated on and he looked at everything that he had made and the word behold appears. Behold, it was good. Genesis 15 and 4 says, and behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, this shall not be thine heir, but ye shall come forth. Out, but but he shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Speaking to Abraham, he said, behold, I think, you know, you think you know what I'm doing, but I want to give you a revelation that there is something greater that I'm giving you. And so when we think about behold, we have to realize that there is something following that. And that is a part of our meditation with God. So we know and we understand that there is a dialogue. There's a dialogue between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Trinity commune and, and communicate with themselves. And what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 12, and also in Isaiah 64 and 4, is that there is a way that we as humans can plug in to that conversation. There's a way that we can plug in and that we can be privy to the communication of the Trinity. It's through the Holy Spirit. Because as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are communicating with themselves, amongst themselves, being three and yet one, the Holy Spirit is connected to us. And so because the Holy Spirit abides in us, as we commune with the Holy Spirit, we get the revelation of what God wants us to have for us. Amen? But without the Holy Spirit, they are communing amongst themselves and we have no way of really, truly knowing the revelation of God. We look, but we have no revelation. 
We listen, but we have no revelation. But when the spirit who is on the inside of us reveals the spirit of the father and of the son and of itself, then suddenly we have a revelation and we know what God is wanting to do for us. Amen. We know that they commune with one another because in Genesis 1 and 26, it said, he said, let us make man communicating. In Genesis 11 and 7, again, it says, let us go down and confuse their language, communicating. In Matthew 27 and 46, Jesus on the cross said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Meaning he audibly is letting those that were there hear the communication that he's having with the father at that time. And so it's established in scripture that the father, the son, the Holy Spirit are constantly in communication and from 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 12, it gives us a way to plug in and to connect so that we can be one with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. John 17 says that we will be one in him. And so as we are one in him, we stay connected to him and we have a revelation of what God has for us. Scripture says that, behold, I am standing at the door knocking, saying, who will let me in? And if you let me in, I'll come in and I'll sup with you, meaning I will fellowship with you. So he is setting up an established rule that says, when I knock on the door, if you will allow me to come in, not only will I come in, but I will come in with my spirit and I will connect you with the father in Philippians 3 and 10 it says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death meaning I don't want to just hear about the goodness of the Lord I don't want to just see the goodness of the Lord I want to know him I want to be connected to his spirit in a way so that he abides in me and as I walk and I conduct myself as I live my life I am lined up with the spirit of God meaning I am like my father I am like my brother Jesus and I am exemplifying the spirit of the trinity Amos 3 and 7 says surely the Lord God will do nothing but he revealeth his secret unto the servants his prophets what we know about scripture is that the prophets had an ear for the spirit of God that the spirit of God spoke to the prophets and gave revelation of what God had for his people it is not just a thing that was for the Bible days it is for us now we are to walk and to talk in the spirit of God and in the spirit of our father he says that we are made in his image and in his likeness and the Bible says that he will not withhold himself from us so when we allow Jesus to be all that he wants to be in us, then we suddenly find ourselves walking in a freedom from sin that we have not walked in before. Why would he say to us, be perfect as I am perfect, if he did not present with us and did not give us a way to have this his Holy Spirit in us so that he could do the things that we cannot do in our flesh? If we depend on ourselves, we will always fall. Bible saying that we will fall seven times, but we get back up. It is not our ability. It is not our power. It is not what we can do on ourselves to get ourselves up. It is the Holy Ghost on the inside of us that strengthens us, that gives us a revelation that he came and he died on the cross so that we could have eternal life, not just life here on the earth, but life with him in glory and when we make a mistake and we fall short it's the Holy Spirit communing with 
with the Son who is our advocate, saying, I have died for them, remind them of my sacrifice. It's the Holy Spirit communing with the Father, saying, I've been sent to take care of this. Just wait a minute. Hold your judgment. It's the Holy Ghost that is communicating with our spirit, saying, now that you have invited me in, we're going to tell your flesh to be quiet for a while. We're not going to allow guilt to condemn you because Jesus has already died for that. We're not going to allow guilt to cause you to fall away because you are blessed now and you're blessed when you go in and you're blessed when you come out. You don't feel like that you're the person that you used to be, but I encourage you today that you are the person that God says that you are because once you have said Jesus come in, the revelation of the Trinity has come into your atmosphere. The revelation that says that let God be God and every man a liar. We see that Peter in Matthew 16, 13 through 19 got a revelation about who Jesus was. It says in this scripture, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he said to his disciples saying, whom do men say that I the son of man am? And he said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I I am and Peter saying answered saying thou art the Christ the son of the living God and Jesus answered and said unto him blessed art thou Simon Barjona for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee but my father which is in heaven and I say unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What Peter had realized and what Jesus revealed in the question is that Peter had been communicating with his father. Peter saw the works of Jesus Christ. Peter heard the testimony of those who were healed. And yet the revelation came to Peter when he had spent time with God. Jesus himself identifying it says, flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you. In other words, Peter, you have a revelation of who I am, but it wasn't a man that gave it to you. You have a revelation of who I am and my divinity, but it wasn't something you heard that gave you that revelation. It is because you spent time with my father. And so we know that there are two ways that we have revelation that enters into our hearts. We have revelation from what we see and we have revelation from what we hear. But the impact that we have is the revelation that the Holy Spirit gives to us. Amen. The question that I want to ask today is, is Jesus a visitor or a resident in your heart? Because if Jesus is a visitor, then you're still waiting on the revelation of who he is. But if he is a resident, then he is constantly revealing this to you on an everyday basis. He is revealing to you that the things that you walk in now is just the beginning of what God has for you. He is revealing to you that if you feel sick, it's just the end of what God is bringing you out of. He is revealing to you that the people that you're praying for, he has already done the work for them. He is revealing to you that the places that he has promised you that you would go, that you're going to be a witness to him, that people are going to come to him and have an understanding of him that they won't have in any other way than if you were the one that was revealing it to them. So we move from a conversation to a revelation we move from a place that we are talking so much and God can't get a word in edgewise to a place where we're listening, that we are disciples. We are being discipled by the Holy Spirit. We're being discipled by his spirit. In 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 52, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. Ye shall not all sleep, but ye shall all be changed. The mystery that the Holy Spirit reveals to us is that we don't have to die to know about God's greatness. 
I don't have to die in order to know that he is a mighty good God. I don't have to die in order to know that he is a healer. I don't have to die in order to know that he is a deliverer, that he will pick you up where you are and where you don't deserve for him to come. He'll come because of his grace and his love, because he has committed himself to the backslider, because he has committed himself to those who will call upon the name of the Lord. We don't have to die in order to have a revelation of his goodness. In, in Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. The revelation that we have from the Holy Spirit is that we will never have an understanding of what God has for us absent his interpretation of the Father's will. It's one thing to say, I know God is going to do something for me. It's another thing to have the Holy Spirit say, not only is God going to do something for you, but he is going to send you to college. And after he sends you to college, if you study and get your degree, he is going to give you an amazing job so that you can be a blessing to other people and you can give them employment. And then he's going to give you a testimony so that when you get there, you have to tell them what God brought you through to get you to to that point. He gives us the whole picture. We as Christians have to get away from just talking about things and just communicating with God where we do all the talking, but instead getting to a place where we get a revelation. We get a revelation of who he is. We get a revelation of his power. And I, I, I want to say today, and, and I have to say this, as children of God, as people of God, we have to embrace the power of the Holy Ghost. We have to embrace the power and the authority of Jesus Christ, our Lord. He did not create us to walk on this earth and not be change agents. We have got to be the change agents of this earth. We are the salt of the earth and we walk in power and in authority. We serve a true and a living God. And because we serve a true and a living God, we have to walk and conduct ourselves. When we see Satan operating in a place and in a way he shouldn't, we have a right and an authority to walk into that place and say, Jesus is here. And because he's here, I am praying that everything that is not like God clear out. I have claimed this place. I have claimed this home. I have claimed this family. I have claimed this situation for God. That's the revelation. Let us embrace our walk with the spirit of God. Let us embrace our conversation where we ask the why of a child, where we just want to listen and we want to glean the wisdom that he has for us. And when we get to this pace, when we get to this place, the revelations that he gives to us, I have not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has for us. Dear Father, thank you for the word today. We thank you, Father God, that you are gracious, you love us, you are so amazingly good to us. Our desire, Lord, today is to walk and to listen and to ask why and to get a revelation. Bless your people today, Lord. Continue to bless us and make us a blessing. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.